Let's talk about the Eritrol 205, which is one of Eritrol's you know, entry level, residential, light commercial valves. They also have the 2400, the 2500. We have separate videos covering those. But for now, we're going to talk about the 205. Comes in a couple of different versions. We only have a one inch model of this. You can get it with, you know, only um, female inlet and outlet. You can get it in thread or slip. And you can get it with a flow control or without. Obviously, this one has a flow control on it. And um, the specs on this for the operating pressure range is 10 to 150 PSI. The flow range on it is 0.25 through 30 gallons per minute. It runs really good at low flows. You know, 0.25 is, you know, one fourth of a gallon per minute. So it's a great valve to use with low flow drip systems. Now let's talk about the solenoid. The solenoid is interesting on this. If you're testing it with an ohm meter, get a little bit of water running out of this one. Um, if you're testing it with an ohm meter, you're probably going to see about 18, maybe 20 ohms for a, a healthy unit. For the inrush amperage to open it up is 400 milliamps, and to hold it open is 200 milliamps. And it's got an encapsulated plunger, and how it's encapsulated is this little white piece of plastic here that's actually removable. And if you take this white piece out, you're in danger of losing the plunger. It has a plunger with a little spring there. Um, but, you know, something to keep in mind is that, you know, if you've, uh, if you've got one of these, you're troubleshooting. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. It looks like the solenoid should be working. Sometimes little pieces of debris or grit or sand or something will get down inside this encapsulating piece here. So if we come across a problem that we can't diagnose otherwise, we'll take this little white piece out. You take a little small flathead screwdriver and very carefully pry it up out of there and it'll come out. Put your plunger back in there and then remount it and see if that helps. Because like I said, sometimes occasionally, very occasionally, you'll get a little piece of grit down in there that you know, makes it, you know, work intermittently or not open at all or not close all of the way. Okay, so great uh, solenoid and for all of the Eritrol, you know, um, valves, you're going to use the very same solenoid. It, um, you know, it works with the 2400, the 2500. Some manufacturers have different solenoids that you use for their larger versions. Um, you're going to find a, a manual internal bleed. And so, you know, my suggestion is, is that if you're installing this, the very first time that you use any valve, it, it, it has a bleed screw on it, an internal bleed or an external bleed, open it up for the first time with that. Sometimes, you know, if you put one of these in and it's not as 100% clean as you'd like it to be, you know, sometimes maybe a little bit of grit or dirt will get up in here. And, you know, what makes this work, if you saw one of the earlier videos, is that there's a very tiny tube here that allows water to pass. And that's what opens the chamber and opens the valve, actuates the valve. And you don't want anything to get in there. And that's what the bleed screw is there for, is to open it up for the first time. And it allows water to, to flush straight through. Um, some people call these, you know, flush screws, but it's actually an internal manual bleed. Obviously, we've got, you know, a flow control, non-flow control versions of this. And when you go to rebuild it, it's got eight screws on here that, you know, that you can uh, take off with either a, a Phillips head screwdriver or a one quarter inch nut driver to take that off. And you can also get this in a reclaimed water version. And I think the reclaimed water version uses a, has a purple solenoid. Uh, not 100% sure about that. We don't use reclaimed water as far as I know anywhere in South Carolina or any of the markets that I've been in. But the ones I have seen, um, you know, online and in pictures that it has a tag on it, like a purple tag to indicate that you're using reclaimed water or effluent water. So let's take this thing apart and I'm going to show you a trick on how to put it back together properly. 
Okay, let's go ahead and break down this 205. And this is one of the ones to where the screws are pretty close to the solenoid. Uh, it's not a big deal if you're using a screwdriver to get down in there, as long as the screwdriver's got a sh long enough shaft to get by the solenoid. But since I'm using a nut driver, I'm going to take the solenoid off first and set it aside. Now let's go ahead and take this thing apart. You got to watch out for this one. Once you take all the screws out, the spring is kind of strong in this one, so just make sure that you hold on to it so that it doesn't all just bounce apart. Okay, now, like I said, it's going to bounce apart pretty easily. And don't forget that this has an extra little piece here that not too many other valves have. Don't lose it. We're going to put it back on there because it definitely matters about the tolerance of the screws to put it back together. All right. And like all the other ones, if you're going to put the original parts back on, just inspect everything. Check the little pilot hole here for the solenoid operation. Check your pin. Make sure it's not damaged. Spring. And now let's take a look here at the diaphragm. And this diaphragm is a little different than others in that it definitely has a a specific way that it goes back and it's kind of hard to see but there's a little kind of nub here a little protrusion on the diaphragm to help you put it back into place and that indicates the hole that goes over where your solenoid hole will go and and if you look here you know you can see the direction of flow on the arrow is pointing this way and always your solenoid is going to be on the exit end or at least on all of the you know the valves that I know of for residential use it's always on the exhaust port end and on this one you know let's take a look here it's a little dirty on the inside and this is a brand new valve so maybe something has gotten in you know a little bit of dust has gotten down into it in the manufacturing process or maybe just being in my truck but we're going to check down in here this one you know the the diaphragm seat doesn't come out there's not an extra part for that you know we're going to check and make sure that there's nothing down inside the valve that's going to mess it up now i'm going to show you a trick here to putting this one back together because this is probably one of the more difficult valves to rebuild simply because of it's got eight screws the spring is really strong and if you thread this in wrong and this diaphragm gets spun around inside of here you know you can uh, the screws if it's out of place will pierce this diaphragm and cause a leak so here's a little trick that I do okay we're going to put our spring back on here we're going to spin this around, check our little piece right here. I'm going to make sure that it lines up because this is raised. You may not be able to see it in the video, but this little piece right here for the, the solenoid pilot hole, this right here is raised. So we can take this and, you know, what, what we have to do here, let me see if I can show you properly. You know, the spring moves around a little bit and it seats right on top of here plus the pilot hole so make sure that your spring is in the proper place get that pilot or get the pin in that hole and then spin it around and get it to where you know you can push the hole in the diaphragm down on the little nub there and now we're going to put our our little metallic piece on here and you know it's really easy for this one to come out of place and to spin around and it's difficult just to put it together as is so I you know a little technique and I can't forget who I saw do this but what you do is put your screws in here and you run it in until you've got the second You know, the second spin on your screw here, the second little ridge is going to go through and kind of grab a hold of, you don't want to do too many, right? Just make sure it's in far enough to, to grab a hold of that diaphragm and to hold it in place. 
And if you run it too far in, then it's going to mess up the threads here. But what we're going to do is put this in just enough to where it grabs. And you've got to kind of hold this, this, the spring in as you're doing this. And we're going to go around and put all of these on just enough to where it catches that diaphragm. Okay. Spin this around and get our last two screws on. And if you've ever tried to rebuild one of these, you'll know what I'm talking about. If this one's a little difficult to get right, and sometimes if you put it back together wrong and this diaphragm gets out of place or spins around or even folds over, then you're going to screw up the diaphragm and it's going to cause a leak in it. So this is, you know, we're going to spin it back around here. We're going to line it up and set it down on there. Okay. And the, the screws being in here are going to line it up. We've got one more that we didn't put in, but that's okay. As long as you've got the majority of them in there, it's going to hold it in place and put it right back where it's supposed to be. And because the little raised nub on here fits down into the hole for the solenoid pilot tube, it's going to line up really good and set into place. So let's run our screws back down. And that looked really simple and went really easy because we're here on a table and it's a clean environment. But this is actually kind of a difficult valve to rebuild out in the field. Have to make sure that everything is really clean when you're putting it back together and there's nothing down on the diaphragm. And I think I've mentioned before in other videos, but you don't really have to crank these screws down in here. As long as it's good and snug, that's good enough. But I've seen these rebuilt before to where somebody thought that they were, you know, King Kong or Hulk Hogan or somebody and just crushed these to where it broke the plastic here. But that's not necessary. That's not how they were designed. So, you know, just use your hand strength to put it back together. And we're going to put our solenoid back in here. And this is one of the ones that's got some really fine threads on the solenoid. So just, you know, be easy with it when you're putting it back and make sure that you're not stripping out these threads. And like I said before, it's, it's really easy to do as we're sitting here on a clean table and everything's kind of straight up and down. But when you're down in a, you know, the valve pit or in a, you know, a dugout hole, it's a little more difficult than it seems. And as long as you've got your capture on here, it's not a big deal to put this back together. But as I mentioned before, sometimes we take this out if there's a problem. But we'll get this back and seated down on here good. And a lot of times I haven't mentioned this before, but what I'll do on the flow control, you know, this thing is open and sometimes people take it all the way open and crank it until it kind of, you know, sticks here. But what I like to do is take it all the way open and just come back maybe an eighth of a turn just to make sure that it's not completely just crushed open, but it has a little bit of flexibility there and open it back up a little bit and make sure that your bleed screw is closed. And there we go.